Pow wow wow, yippee yo, yippee yay. Welcome back to DAO Talk number 23. Thank you so much, guys. Alex Fazel here, always to serve you. And next week, Cyrus the Good will be back. So really looking forward to having him back. But without further ado, thank you so much, guys, for all the great support across the DAO, across the Telegram channels. Really, there's an incredible vibe these days. So it's all thanks to you. We are Swiss Borg. So today we're going to cover some really interesting topics. Number one, we're going to look at ethics, something that's extremely important. Number two, we're going to look at competitive positioning. What makes SwissBorg different in this current landscape and why does SwissBorg matter in terms of the vision of its future? And then so the first thing we got to understand, guys, is that we have not one, not two, but three winners for the crypto swag for putting awesome comments in the comment section below. So thank you so much for that. Number one for the person who had the most upvotes, Oliver Buxton. Thank you so much for your awesome comment. Don't forget to give your details. Tag us in the Swiss Board Telegram channel main chat, and then we'll follow up with the procedures to get you that swag. Number two, a big shout out to Cryptonota. Thank you so much. This message was just so profound, so deep, that even though it didn't have as many likes as some other comments, we really, really had to give this person a prize. Thank you so much, CryptoNota, for such a moving message. And number three, CryptoCorda, thank you so much. Again, really kind words. Took the time to write a detailed comment, so you all deserve your swag. So don't forget, guys, in this video today as well, put your comments below so that we can also send you some swag and a goodie bag with Swiss Borg cool stuff. So first, shout out to JM Borg. Jose Maria, who is one of the most incredible ambassadors in DAO. He's been helping us grow the Spanish community, always on Kryptonite's TV tribes. You can see his videos in Spanish and so many things he does to contribute. If you don't know him, please talk to him. He's an incredible community member. Now, and this person next, Remy, is something that really moved me, guys. Like, really, I got emotional when I saw these pictures. So Remy is a part of also the Swiss board DAO. He's very active in the French chats. Si, tu, si vous parlez français, n'hésitez surtout pas à vous adresser à Remy. And basically what he does is he's been supporting us on so many things. He's on the CHSB token team, which talks about TA and fundamentals and breaks down the token on trading view, uh, creates incredible content, graphs on traction, et cetera, et cetera. But also recently, Remy had a birthday. And uh, this really moved me. It was his son actually did that drawing that you can see behind me. You can see it right behind me. Uh, he drew something for his dad for his birthday, as you can see. And it's just incredible, man. I mean, his son who took a pen and made it Swiss board t-shirt for him. But on top of that, you know, just showing that he's really, really dedicated to this. And uh, thank you so much, Remy, for all your effort. It's you can't even imagine. It means the moon to us, what you've been doing for us. Thank you so much. So without further ado, let's move forward. And the next part here, as you guys know, last week we talked about hiring Jackie, an awesome senior marketing manager. But she told us a story which was really interesting in the Swiss board meeting just this Tuesday. And her question was, are you an ethical person? Are you truly an ethical person? Because obviously, Jackie, you know, it's not just about Swiss board choosing the right employees, but the right employees need to choose us as well. So having options, you know, you need to decide. So why did Jackie choose Swissborg and not one of the competitors? Now she had to think about it. She was thinking about what are, what are the ethics? You know, who are these people? What is their identity? What is their DNA, their principles, their values? And those are really good questions to ask yourself before starting with a company because it's not all about, it's not all about the money always, right? And she noticed that there's extreme inequality in the wealth management, finance, and in the investment space. So that was one thing that she didn't like. But also she realized that, you know, it's always the same people keeping the wealth, right? The majority of this wealth is always unfairly distributed. And that was also something that she didn't find ethical. And after having a great chat with Anthony and discussing specific numbers, she had a breakthrough, as you can see on the picture, she had a really cool breakthrough. And this is what she learned from this experience and why she chose to work at Swissborg and not any competitor or company in finance. She realized that through the conversation with Anthony that more than 75% of people who invest lose money, lose money. And she just 
to her, it made sense that, you know, why are so many companies trying to really maximize trading volume, giving crazy leverage, 100x and all these things without helping people succeed? So always thinking short term, always thinking about the money and the trading volume rather than creating tools that can help the users and more importantly, the community succeed. And she really resonated with the machine learning that we're working on, obviously creating this type of robo advisory company that not just focuses on money, but helps people. And that really resonates to her. And these are the values that she really appreciated the most. Swissborg is not just, per not just profit, it's purpose. It's impartial inclusivity. So from the ICO all the way to now, it's empowering and not controlling. It's experimentation and innovation, which is extremely important because although you need to build robust technology, you always have to have innovative mindset. What is out there? What can I do to add extra value? And then of course, full transparency, which is a big topic today based on ethics. Full transparency is something that the entire traditional financial industry really, really needs in order to regain trust. And then of course, you guys know meritocracy over inequality. That's something that we're really into and that you, most of you already know. Now, welcome to some new family members. Woohoo, Piotr, thank you so much. We have a new Scala backend engineer. We're super hyped. As you guys know, in the recent Kryptonites interview with Charles Hoskinson, he talks about how Scala is one of the most efficient programming and functional languages out there and that he loves this language because it's a lot more concise and is, for those reasons, a lot faster to execute. So uh, welcome to Piotr and also another senior product manager, Gavrilo. Awesome to have another member on the team. The Swissborg family is growing day by day and we're over 60 employees, which is huge, right? Because most DeFi projects only have roughly, you know, 15 to 20 to 25 employees. So the Swissborg family is definitely expanding, which is always a very good sign. Now, competitive positioning. What is the USP, the unique selling point? Now, this is probably one of the most important things when starting any business. And really, I believe that this is what helped us differentiate ourselves from most of the alternatives on the market. Now, for those who do not know, and the reason why I'm sharing this slide is because you need a good framework before you even start doing something like that. And one of my favorite books of all time is a book called Blue Ocean Strategy, which gives you a simple framework in saying that if you want to really differentiate yourself, you have to look at a quadrant with four points. Number one, what are you going to create? So something that's completely new. So for instance, us, the whole smart engine was completely new. We didn't have it on a retail level. Nobody was offering that, so that's completely new. What are you going to raise? So what are you going to increase? For example, with Swissborg, the UX or the UI, right? The interface is super clean. It's very highly and well-designed and we've raised the standards there. But also we got to understand is you also need a, the flip side, which is what are you going to reduce and eliminate? Because one of the most critical mistakes that most of the exchanges have made in the crypto space is that they want to do everything at the same time. You go on their website, they're going to talk about, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to offer our products to beginners, novices, but also professional traders. And really they're aiming for everyone at the same time. And when your aim is going to all these different demographics, it means that you do not have a name actually. And that's one of the biggest weaknesses you can see in crypto exchanges and most trading platforms is they try to address everyone. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So there are trade-offs, right? If you create something new, if you raise the bar on many levels, then you have to sacrifice others or else there's no clear target. And that's what many, many exchanges have failed to do in the past. So let's say, for instance, eliminate. But for us, which was good, we eliminated order books, right? You don't see any order books on the Wealth app. And that's a really good thing because, you know, it makes the, the whole experience a lot easier. But also reduce the features, for instance. I know some of you guys want stop losses, limit orders, and maybe one day we will have them. But, you know, you need to sacrifice some things in order to gain others. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. So every time you think about trying to create some, something new, use this framework, always think about create, raise, but also eliminate and reduce. And then you'll most likely have really quality competitive positioning. And I think many companies fail to do that. So just wanted to share that with you. Now, with regards to the actual ethics, ethics is critical, guys. It is so important because 
we know that the financial industry has been unethical for the past decades, right? And this is really where I think Swissboard can excel on top of the technology, the products and everything like that. But here are some hard facts for everyone to know in terms of transparency. Number one, guys, the ICO, since the ICO, the founding Swissboard team has not received the tokens. And you can look here above, guys. Here above, you can go and trace it on ETHplorer, ETHscanner. We have not received the tokens. The tokens have not moved. Uh, and, and that is something that we're ultra pr proud of because most of you guys may have more tokens than I do, probably. And it's great because we still have to keep working. We still have to keep pushing so that the day we do receive our tokens, you know, we will be rewarded based on meritocracy, not just because we did an ICO. So that is really strong. And I can guarantee you guys, very, very, very few people can claim this in this space. Most people had issues, uh, and you can see this on crypto Twitter, by actually getting the tokens ahead of time, selling them at a high, et cetera, et cetera. There's some uh, shady practices on that sense that has completely killed trust. So that is something that's really important in terms of our transparency. Number two, for those who've been following my brother Cyrus for a while now, he has actually showed his salary. And one thing that's really incredible, like based on Glassdoor and some of these statistics and comparing Swissborg with a fintech company with 50 to 60 employees and a CEO position and taking this relative to where he lives, where he's paying his taxes and everything, the salary range is roughly a third of what he would make at another company. And if you take the same stats and I compare it here in the UK, where in the UK salaries are slightly lower than Switzerland because Switzerland is quite an expensive place, still his salary would be half of what he would have made in a different company doing the exact same job. And for those reasons, none of us are rich. A lot of people have sacrificed their salaries just because they're more in it for the purpose than the profit, as we saw in the previous slides. And that's something that I'm extremely, extremely proud of. Now, community-centric versus shareholder-centric. Guys, since the ICO, we've never done any equity rounds. A lot of the big ICOs from 2017, 2018 are already at their Series B. And the problem of that is most of these deals were not token deals. They were pure equity, meaning that they're diluting the value of the token, right? I mean, if you do equity, if that's the only way to survive, then that's the way it is. But at least do a deal with tokens so that those shareholders have stake in the game and do not dilute the value of the token and focus on its growth and utilities. So we're purely community centric. And really our dream guys, our ultimate dream is to one day show that you can create an economy purely based on the token and no longer need shares. Take the shares and rip them to pieces. That would be a dream. And with your support, guys, this could be feasible. And that that is just changing the course of history when it comes to a structure in a company, which we really hope we can achieve. Uh, you guys know we're licensed, we're regulated, we're audited as well. So that's just transparency. I mean, we're, it's just trust, right? It's really, when you're licensed, you know, the, the, the actual regulators, they know everything about you. They know your they track, they look at your criminal records, they look at everything. So that's an extra layer of trust and you guys already know that. Now, one thing that's very important. I was attacked on Twitter the other day and someone was saying that the Swiss Borg CHSB token was completely wash traded. And it hurt my feelings to be very honest because we had many opportunities and you must know guys that there are some really shady market makers in this space that will basically say, give me this much money I'm going to do some wash trading to activate other bots and algorithms to get more buy orders so that you see a, see a trend. And then you guys can just dump your tokens and make a lot of money. And there's a lot of these shady practices on the market. The beautiful thing here is just through the Wealth app, we have more than half of the total trading volume. So the other day we had 3 million uh, daily trading volume on CHSB token and $1.5 million was executed through the Wealth app that has no order books, so you know that it's not wash trading and it's not fake volume, which is a serious concern in this space. You know, you see some companies where they'll have the, their daily trading volume 
will be more than half the size of their total market cap. Can you imagine that? I mean, how could that be real? It's just, you know, we have to stay down to earth and make sure that the volume is purely organic because that's also a sign of trust with the community and not trying to take shortcuts or cheat in terms of the price. The other one, we do not sell your data to any third party or share it with any third party. You've seen other brokers recently. We'll talk more about this later, but that's one topic. And one more story here at the bottom, guys, this side. <laughs> so you can see open doors at HQ. So true story. And by the way, this is my brother doing a really cool breakdance freeze. Uh, but I was in Switzerland. It was last year in January. And we were in an executive meeting, you know, discussing some really important things. And we had a visitor. Our doors at Lausanne are always open. We've had community members randomly come in, knock on the door, check our offices, see that everyone's working, shake hands, and even re receive swag. And my brother in that specific meeting said, hold on, guys, I really need to take this. He left a very important meeting just to welcome a community member who had been begging him to get a, a cap and a T-shirt. And he went out of the meeting, he talked to the person, offered coffee, and said, hey, I got to jump back in the meeting, but here's your swag. I'll introduce you to other people. So the doors are fully open. I mean, there's not better than that, right? You can go just and meet everybody and double check that, you know, we're all doing hard work and stuff like that. So transparency is really to the max. And obviously, we will continue to build and try to think of new ways on how to be transparent and build that relationship of trust with all of you out there. Now, ethics. One more point on ethics, guys. Fees. I see a lot of debates on fees. Now, one thing that we really need to understand, and I think most of you guys out there know it, but fees are extremely complicated. It really is. You need to look really deep into this. And there are lots of people hiring legal advisors to find loopholes and terminology so that they can deceive, so that they can hide the truth from you. And it's really shady. And this is another part of the transparency that at Swissborg, we really value and we're proud to have this type of system. Now, commission fees and spreads. For those who do not know, in most cases where you see zero commission, people are taking a spread, right? So between the bid and the ask, they'll take money behind the scenes without you knowing that they took money, right? So basically spreads are kind of like hidden fees, right? And the problem here, guys, is it's extremely unethical, right? Because you need to be as trans transparent as possible. If you really have the DNA of a community, if you have the DNA of the blockchain and all the principles and values and philosophy it represents, you have to be transparent on fees. You cannot hide these things anymore. And we hope that at Swissborg, we're setting a good example to all the other guys out there to do the same thing. And this is what happens, guys. Be very careful. When you test any platform, this is likely what is happening when it's zero commission. Number one. As you guys can see all the way up there, people advertise zero commission, but it will be for a very specific point. So for instance, here you can see you can have zero commission just on deposits or just on withdrawals, or it could be, as you can see on the second part, zero commission just on specific products. So maybe only for US stocks, but not for any other stocks. But those things are hidden with little asterisks that will drive you to one document, to another document, to another document, to another link, and then you'll go through this contract-looking documentation where there's so much to read that you're gonna give up. That's how hidden things really are, and it sucks. It really sucks. And then under here, so this is something that's really tricky that has been happening recently, so be very careful with these type of spreads. The number three, they will quote you a rate that is lower than the exchange that they're trading on, than, than the order book that they're trading on. So let's say, for instance, you know, the token is $10, they will quote $11, making you think that that's the right rate, and then they will take the spread. And that is super shady. I've seen some of these websites recently said, oh, we will do zero commission for you, but if we execute better than the rate that we offer, then we'll take a spread, right? So you see, it seems like the world to you. It's great marketing, by the way. Some of these guys, uh, just really the marketing is, is really, really unethical. And that's sad because what they will do, like I just said, is yes, they will execute at a better rate than what they're presenting, what they're quoting, but that quoted rate has been manipulated from the get-go. So that is another way that people are trying to find sneaky ways to deceive you, the community. 
And then the next one you can see under, obviously we're not calling out any names. You can see I've hidden the names. Uh, just look at zero commission scandals or anything like that if you want specific use cases. We're not here to create enemies. We're just here to show that we need to be ethical. And then the last one, which is very, very common and famous, as you guys may know, is the fact that they're selling your data. They're selling your data to high frequency traders. And you can see an article right right there on the right below that specific point. And what is the problem about that? Imagine this, guys. Imagine you're a fighter. I love UFC, by the way. I don't know if any of you guys like mixed martial arts. But that is selling the data to the high frequency traders is giving lots of information on your behavior, how you behave. And the more they understand your behavior, the more they'll be able to compete against you. Because buying and selling on markets is a competition, right? Some people win money, some people lose money. It's a transfer of money. But by knowing your behavior, by buying all this data, they're likely to beat you even more. So not only they're selling your data without your consent or consent hidden in really long, long, long terms and conditions that we most, most of us do not read, but they're giving them an advantage to go against us, which also sucks if you're, if you're trading. So what are some more ethical ways to make money rather than, you know, going through these hidden, you know, unethical ways is memberships, as you can see below. So the memberships, actually, I'm right on it. So let's move me, myself, a little bit on the side and you can see here so memberships right there you go so you can see memberships this is a common thing so a lot of trading platforms will kind of create like a Netflix Amazon type thing where you just pay on a monthly basis and it goes through a membership guess what as you guys know Swiss Fork has this but not only it's a membership it's a membership that's adding value to tokenomics it's bringing the value to the token and not to to actual money right so it's putting value to the token and, and our membership system is actually better than that because you're not paying you're just staking you're just buying a token that actually could appreciate over time so not only you're not losing money but you could make money and you're getting all these services so it's a really advanced form of membership right it's really cool the second way that people are making money these days ethically is just lending right and as you guys know the lending and earning interest is in the roadmap for Swiss Fork, so we will have that, and that's an ethical way to actually earn money rather than hiding these fees. And then, of course, there's something called payment for order flow and rebates. You know, as Swiss Fork scales and we work on these things, you know, we could add other extra revenues, and we'll always make sure to share all the updates with you guys so that you know everything about what's going on. So, really important, guys. It's not just ethics, but today we really want to dive specifically into transparency. All right, guys, so let's dive into competitive positioning. What makes Swiss Borg different from what is being offered in the current crypto landscape? And first thing to understand, guys, is that not all of these guys are competitors. They can just be seen as alternatives because we don't own an order book, as you know, so we're not an exchange, right? But people do use these, and there's no bad blood. This is just a different value proposition. So first off, we're going to kick off with the company. What is unique about Swiss Borg as a company? So number one, one thing that you guys have probably noticed is thanks to machine learning, thanks to all these tools that we're providing to not just focus on profit, but your performance is really creating some sort of robo advisory platform. But this robo advisory platform is something that we want to eventually create the first real crypto wealth management platform for the community, right? That's the ultimate dream. So you guys can see that first and foremost, the actual value proposition is very different. We don't want to be an exchange. We just want to be a wealth management platform. Number two, and very critical, as you guys can see here below, is the company status. The company status is something that we're extremely proud of because we're breaking this whole traditional VC-backed type organization. We're completely community-backed and we're community-driven through our referendum. So that's something that we're really proud of. As you can see, Crypto.com also did an ICO, but there are some VCs and probably some equity rounds that have happened since that we're unaware of, which is unfortunate, right? Because it's hidden at the moment and it's really hard to find this type of information. And that's kind of stressing the point we saw before, which is we really need transparency on these type of things to really build 100% trust. As you guys can see, we are mainly focusing on the EU, right? So the EU will be the core market just because the EU has lots of potential, but also you guys know Switzerland, France, UK, Italy, 
our, our core markets. That's where the majority of our community is. And that's where there is a lack of strong localized propo proposals are. You know, there are different options, but it's not well localized. And there's still a lot of market share to take. And I do think we will end up becoming the default option here in the EU. I'm very confident about that. When it comes to the use of blockchain, as you guys can see again here, a lot of these companies are obviously supporting the access to blockchain and making profits or creating a business behind the blockchain, but are not actually using the blockchain. As you guys know, SwissBorg, uh, actually the very first referendum was only two months after the ICO where we already democratized wealth management. We already democratized this actual situation where we asked the community to vote on where our money should be allocated. Would it be a desktop version or a native mobile app? And the community voted and then we had another referendum with more than 4,000 people participating, which is incredible. So we do have decentralized components within a centralized company, which is something we're proud of. And of course, for our positioning in the EU, we're one of the few to have not only two financial licenses, but we also have a VQF membership in Switzerland for anti-money laundering, making this really create uh, a company that you can trust 100%. Now, in terms of the product, let's look at the product, guys. The first key point, actually, so if you look at the fourth part in terms of our unique USP, unique selling proposition, or our differentiation or positioning, you can see that we already have 17 fiat gateways in less than four months since we launched the Wealth app. I mean, that is crazy. I mean, we're one of the top platforms in the world already because we did things the right way we were compliant and banks are willing to put an effort and provide us with banking solutions. And for those reasons, that has been incredible. 17 fiat gateways. You can see right below is one of our weaknesses, which you guys know, it's just the beginning. We only have six, six crypto assets listed as of today, but we do have some exciting crypto assets that will be listed in the near future. And I'm sure either next week or the week after, we will discuss the coins and tokens and the frameworks we're using to actually list the next coins and tokens. Uh, just under that, we can see crypto withdrawal or more control your wealth. Some of these platforms such as Revolut, although Revolut will be changing soon, they made an announcement, or eToro, they're CFDs, contracts for differences, meaning that you cannot withdraw your crypto, you cannot send it elsewhere, it's locked and you're just buying the underlying, so you're not actually owning the crypto, which kind of defeats the purpose, but it's more to help institutional players who just don't know how to have their own private keys or just don't want to be bothered with these type of things. And then if you go down, best spot rates, multi-exchange liquidity are things that only SwissBoard on the entire planet offers to the community along with a company called Voyager Invest. The differences between Voyager Invest is there's no transparency in terms of who the exchanges are, although they claim to have between 10 to 12. Uh, and also one thing is the multi-node order execution management system which is creating, right, new pairs that do not exist on the market. As far as we know, we have not seen this technology anywhere else, which is a great competitive position or a great competitive edge and really important. I mean, this feature is so important because you're creating a localized trading pair. Let's say, for example, the Israeli Shekel to Bitcoin, which may not have the liquidity. So you're creating this accessibility, but you're connecting it with global liquidity, right? So not only you're creating accessibility, but you're giving depth of the order book. So people can buy it instantly, the amount they want. So it's really important to have this feature. And then in terms of transparency, I mean, we just talked about this, guys. There is nobody can, is as transparent as SwissBorg, as far as I know. And that's really something that we'll keep working on to provide 100% transparency because that's, again, that's in the principles and values that has to be there. Uh, passive income and earning is obviously a weakness. We still do not have this in terms of lending platform. It's something that we're going to de dive deep into. It will be something that we will have, and we'll talk about it in the next slide to come. Crypto thematics. So there were indices on a platform called Crypto20, which has done relatively well. And Crypto.com used to have three types of indices, right? They had a conservative you know, uh, index, a balanced and growth index. So you could kind of choose depending on your risk appetite, which was cool. Unfortunately, maybe because they're doing so many things, you know, with the cards and different services that they actually just announced a month ago that they're going to discontinue having these indexes, which is a pity because 
if you take indexes or indices and these thematics and you market it well, you communicate it well so that everyone understands the value proposition, it's a massive, massive, massive point to have in terms of growing wealth management platform. And at SwissBoard, we'll make sure that this is well communicated and it's really attractive to everyone. And then in terms of UI, UX, you know, it's hard to measure this because it's very biased and subjective. But uh, obviously, you know, you can see in the comments in most of the YouTube channels that everyone's like, oh my God, I've never seen something this easy or I love the design and all these you know, kind of fluffy comments, which is not very measurable. It's not measurable, but it's clear that the UI UX is definitely one of our fortes. And then in terms of fees, we talked about it earlier. One thing that you know Swiss Borg is not only we're 100% transparent, which is very rare these days. We do not take a spread, which is also very rare these days. But on top of that, the price that we're going to quote you which is the lowest price available on the market, is the price that the smart engine will do its best to execute with the minimum slippage. Our slippage is very, very low. So once we quite quote the very best rate on the market, it's basically executed at that rate. So uh, that's something that, again, we're super proud of having, guys. And really, you know, it's, it's really important. It really is important that we don't deceive, we don't lie, and just, you know, keep things completely ethical. Ethical or ethics is the word of this specific powwow, guys. It's really, really critical. So without further ado, let's talk about the lending and borrowing that we we're talking about a little bit earlier. So obviously the guys at Swissborg and Anthony is doing some incredible work at really trying to compare the different platforms, right? Now, obviously we have great relationships with some of the DeFi projects and it's something that we really want to integrate, you know, taking the best of you know a, a platform like ours, which is centralized with some decentralized components, but making it even more decentralized is something that we definitely will strive to achieve, right? It's really important. It's just that nowadays there are too many limitations to the DeFi world that it's, uh, for us, it's difficult to actually incorporate in terms of longevity, sustainability, and the robustness of the technology. But we are doing lots of comparisons, as you can see here, and let me show you guys what so far our analysis is telling us with regards to DeFi. There are multiple risks. First of all, there have been bugs exploited in the smart contracts. So that's, a, that's a, something of a risk that we do not want our community to face. The most critical problem at the moment is the Ethereum network congestion. The fees are crazy high. So that is definitely not something to, that we're looking forward to. You know, if you have to pay more than $2, $3, for a simple transaction, I mean that's like that's more than than any company would charge in terms of fees, right? So the congestion of the network is a serious, serious issue. And then we got to understand that DeFi is not completely decentralized, right? DeFi still relies on Oracle centralized servers, so it's not completely decentralized. So there are things that are a bit complicated with regards to integ integrating DeFi uh, platforms. So will we start with a centralized lending or borrowing platform? We don't know yet. We'll definitely keep you guys in the loop, but this analysis and really understanding the market and its pros and cons, especially for a long-term sustainable option, is critical so that you guys have the best experience possible, which is more important than anything else. Now, the metrics have gone through the roof since the reward program kicked off. Absolutely mind-blowing, guys. Let's have a look together. 55% week on week in terms of growth, in terms of users. That is incredible. Uh, this reward program is proving to be very successful. The influencers love it. The affiliates love it. Assets under management, we have broken all-time highs with $34 million under management, which is, of course, thanks to also the CHSB, which has been performing quite well. The weekly volume is actually close to $7 million, so we're averaging about a million dollars per day, which is really not bad, you know, for 20,000 users. The, the weekly volume is very exciting. We're actually closer to $17,900 in terms of the protect and burn at the moment. Uh, and the numbers of CHSB stake is up 7.6% week on week, actually even better because we're at 29 million now. And you know, it's funny guys, because everyone was worried that, you know, the CHSB uh, membership utility is getting too expensive, but actually the amount of premium users have been constantly on the rise. And you know, when you think about it, this membership, as you know, is just a deposit, right? So you're not actually spending the money, number one. Number two, you're going to save lots of money. 
And number three, for those who really believe in Swissborg, you know, if the token goes up, once you can redeem the tokens, it might actually be worth even more money, right? So it is expensive and I'm really looking forward to the premium tiers uh, further down the line. But in the meantime, the premium membership has been proving that it is a very successful model. And then over 7,000 tickets scratched. The numbers have been going crazy. And one more thing for you guys to know. In the past week, every single day, we've been averaging more than 1,000 people going through KYC in 24 hours. 1,000 people every single day consistently. And, and that is really crazy traction. It's really good growth. And, you know, we're, we're very, very proud of, of all the help that you guys have given to us. You, you mean the world to us. Like, really, like, you got to understand, guys, without you, none of this would have happened. None of this. And the ambassadors, everyone, everything for everything you're doing, yeah, we love you from the bottom of our heart. Thank you so much for all this incredible work. And um, the last point is if you haven't seen Kryptonite, so we're kind of testing a new format. Not sure if you guys will like it, but Anthony, obviously, he is really one of the brains at Swissborg. You know, he's a guy who kicked off at Polytechnique, has an engineering academic background, but then worked in finance as a financial professional background. And really, you know, when you go from engineer to a financial expert, you know, you see the world, you see the world completely differently. He can have a great conversation with a CTO. He can have a great conversation with Marco, who is in quants and high frequency trading. Uh, you know, it's, it's such a good guy to have in terms of due diligence. So basically, long story short, he offered to create a new type of kryptonites, which is just creating battles, right? Taking two hyped projects and doing maximum due, due diligence, so not the surface level stuff, really going deep so that everyone can see exactly, get a trusted review, get a trusted test live for you to see how it works, and then of course, a tutorial by him navigating the system. So it's really good, you know, it's a bit long, but uh, if you want due diligence and you really want to have an in-depth analysis, it's definitely watch, worth watching. All right, guys, we're done for now, but don't forget to comment below so that you can also earn some Swiss board goodies and swag. And I'd like to finish this with a sentence that I've always been using since the very early days, even in the bear market. The future is bright, my friends. And why do I know it? It's because I understand the fundamentals. Thank you so much, guys. Love you and see you next week.